Well, guys, it's another Friday night, and we're live from L.A. Bar with another edition of the Isaiah Factor Uncensored. As you can see, lots of people here in the place on Richmond Avenue. David, show the couple. They were hiding their crabs. They didn't want anyone to see them. Well, we have a wonderful show planned for you this evening. We have some great guests. Now, some of the people that we're going to talk to, Kim Og, one of the prosecutors that we know from Crime Stoppers, and she's been in Houston. She is a name in Houston. We will talk with her. Also, Bob Price from Breitbart, Texas, and he will be sitting down with myself and the Black Panthers right here in Houston. So we have a wonderful program for you. Make sure you keep it on the spot you have right now. And first, we're going to take a look at some of the top stories in Houston and right around the country. You can call Kristen McQuarrie the big mouth banshee of the day. How deep did she place a proverbial foot in her mouth? I'm just saying we're at the ankle now. The Chicago Tribune writer was trying to be creative as most editorials are when she insulted an entire city of people who survived a major tragedy in Louisiana. McQuarrie wrote in the city of Chicago where she lives, it needs to be hit by a devastating storm like Katrina so the entire system in that city can be reset like improving education and getting rid of the corrupt city government. McQuarrie, your careless comments were dumb and reckless. For that, you get the factor's big mouth banshee of the day. Also, everyone around Texas is all excited with the return of Blue Bell ice cream after being absent from your local store freezer for months. This is after a multi-state outbreak of listeria in your precious Blue Bell. Did you people forget Blue Bell knew about the problems with listeria as far back as two years ago? And the FDA said they did little more than just report it. Now, after people have died and others were hospitalized, you're cheering Blue Bell, Blue Bell, like USA, USA, USA. Come on, people. Join me with a dozen of chocolate chip cookies and milk, and then we can all just call it a stretch pants day and forget about Blue Bell. And this guy, 49-year-old David Connolly, he's a new monster of Harris County. Investigators say this man with that lazy strand of hair at the back of his head, I know you've noticed it. Don't lie, you've seen it. This man, one by one, shot his ex-girlfriend, Valerie Jackson, her husband, Dwayne Jackson, and six children, including one Connolly shared with Jackson. How could this happen when court records show this man was in and out of jail and an abusive husband and abusive boyfriend? Not only did the system fail the victims in this case, we as a community dropped the ball and the end result, one horrible tragedy that will forever be a part of Harris County's history. And that's our top story. And that's what we're going to kick off the Isaiah Factor on Censored with, the David Connolly story. Such a tragedy right here in our community. We know that six children are now dead. And to talk about this issue, we have Maisha Coulter, and she's with AIDS to Victims of Domestic Abuse. Also, we have with us Kim Og, and she's an attorney and a former prosecutor. When you guys heard this story, what did you think? I mean, it's just incredible that we had to hear this tragedy that, that went on in Northwest Houston. Well, well, it puts Houston at the epicenter of the domestic violence, uh, just tragedy. And I think that every Houstonian has something to learn. All the policymakers, the leaders in our city, there were chances that we had to save these children. And I think that uh, our community needs to know every time there's an opportunity to help somebody uh, get out of an abusive situation, we need to do everything we can. Now, Ms. Coulter, was that the case? Was this a situation where people could have intervened and helped save this woman and her children? As residents, as neighbors, people in the community, could we have done more? Because when I introduced this story, I said we failed as a community. Well, I'll say this. The community needs to be aware in a way that they probably aren't, and that's probably one of the reasons why they fell through the cracks in the way that they did. But they encountered the community along the way, as far as I can tell, based on what I know about 
about the situation. They were involved with CPS. They, invo they were involved with law enforcement. They were involved, obviously, with previous prosecutions. So it wasn't as though they didn't have any contact with the system. This was not a secret family. This was not a surprise in terms of their interaction with the community. Well, but it was did shocking. things go wrong? Yeah. You know, because you said it fell through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it did, mm -hmm. because he had his history, mm -hmm. a criminal history, and also a history with CPS. Sure. Where did we fail this family? Without knowing all of the ins and outs of the different responses that this particular family got, one of the things that I know is possible that could have happened in this situation and probably happens all the time is that some people cheat the system. They encounter CPS and they do what CPS says, and so CPS is satisfied that they checked off all of the things that they were supposed to do, and so they let them go about their, their way. A lot of times what is happening is that the people who are responsible for responding to these types of people are not aware of signs and signals that might help to trigger not just, okay, well, they took a parenting class. Okay, well, they did this particular thing that we asked them to do. Other things might be going on. Um, I, I watched some kids talk about what those children were saying to them mm -hmm. in the community. Right. I, they I were saw hungry. A young, yeah, I'm hungry. They had me I, You know, I hate going home. Right. That sort of thing. So, yeah, the community can certainly listen better, and the community can certainly not judge and make sure that they are opening themselves up to helping people become safe. Now, Kim Og, you are a former prosecutor, and you've worked with cases like this or have seen cases like this close up. From your perspective, where did we drop the ball in this particular case in the Connolly family or the Jackson family? The, the riddle of domestic violence is which one in a million is going to spin off and do something horrible like this. You have a lot of families that fight, a lot of families where violence escalates. Um, it's common. And so how we handle it as a system is really important. And we have to rate, in a sense, people in situations. We have to use risk factors. We have to sort of use an objective scale to determine who's dangerous and who's just having issues or problems that need counseling or Now, this guy was in the system over and over again, and one of the issues that... He's your that, classic uh, chronic yeah, offender. Right? What we found out at Fox 26 is there was a chance to send him away almost for life, 25 years. And so, but there was a, a, a snafu where the wife or the girlfriend, Miss Jackson, would not testify against him in court. Now, that's a situation I'm sure you see a lot, sure. where mm -hmm. the victim, who has been abused over and over again, Again, despite sure. that, mm -hmm. they will still go back and they won't testify in court. Sure. How do we get past that? Well, how we get past that is always keeping an open mind. A lot of times when you hear people talk about domestic violence victims, the first thing that comes out of everybody's mouth is why is she staying? Right. The other thing that should be coming to people's mind is what can I do to help facilitate her leaving? What am I doing when I encounter her? Am I hearing that this is going on in the home and I'm shying away from not saying anything to her? Am I letting her keep her secret by saying, you know what, that's happening behind closed doors or it's between a husband and a wife or a girlfriend and a boyfriend, so it's not really anybody's business? Right. That's the problem. The response from most of us is, hey, that's too personal. Um, it's, and we don't want to we be don't bothered. Want, right, right, you know, that's, right. We're in our lives, they're in their mm -hmm. lives. So right. how do we break that cycle where we, we look at it are concerned as a enough? crime. At the point that anybody is in a relationship with someone who is physically abusive to them, emotionally abusive to them, and we know about it, we should be offended, and we should always be open-minded to doing something about it. We wouldn't see a stranger slap or assault someone and not say, hey, the police need to be called. We don't need to keep quiet about this. We need to make sure that this person is safe. When it's a personal situation, for some reason, we say, oh, well, she got slapped, but it is her husband. And Let's that's a Kim. bad response. Kim? You know, Isaiah, this is a perfect uh, opportunity to look at the worst-case scenario. So we can learn from the mistakes that were made, whether it was by the people doing the welfare check, whether it was by CPS, whether it was by uh, the lawyers handling the case. It's easy to be an armchair quarterback. More important Very to have, easy. Yeah. More important to have solutions. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, assessing the risk factors, he yeah. wielded a knife, he cut a woman, there were medical records, there were other witnesses. Sometimes we need to prosecute even where there's not a willing complainant.
And guys, welcome back to the Isaiah Factor Uncensored. Now, this week we saw a very interesting story, a story that blew up my Facebook and Instagram pages. Now, we were in Waller County on Wednesday when there was a protest in the Sandra Bland case. Now, what upset so many people in the community, we showed video and posted a picture of the new Black Panther Party walking around with their assault rifles, and they were sending a definite message to the people of Waller County and the law enforcement out there. Now, joining us live, the Minister of Information, President of the New Black Panther Party here in Houston, Yakanam. We want to thank you for coming on. Also, with a different perspective from Breitbart, Texas, Bob Price, and you were front and center when the uh, Black Panther Party was out in Waller County with your camera all in their faces getting video. When you were out there and you saw them with their assault rifles, what was your perspective? What was your opinion when you walked away? Well, it was an interesting place to be standing. I was literally between his organization and the police who were on in front of the Waller County Jail. And so I could feel the intensity back and forth. But I also didn't feel a danger at that point because I know that this group is a disciplined group. They're out there to express their First Amendment rights. They're also exercising their Second Amendment right, which but I strongly But you have an support. issue with it. I did have an issue with some of the things they had to say. And that, okay. and that was when you're telling saying very strongly that you want to kill police officers, I don't see how that helps anybody. I don't see how that helps the next young black man or the next young black woman to stop by a police officer who's going to be even more on edge now because he doesn't know who's in that car. And I don't see how that helps at all. Okay, Yakanan, when you hear that, that uh, he has reported that you guys said you wanted to kill police officers, that it doesn't help the community at all, what's your response to that? Well, that's just totally not true. We never said anything like that. And, you said uh, off the pigs, off yeah, the pigs, well, repeatedly, off the pigs. Well, that's the difference between uh, white America and black America. You know, when y'all say things, sometimes it doesn't quite mean that, so you have to sit down and get an understanding of exactly what we're so talking about. So when you say off the pigs, when what does say, that mean? When we say off the pigs, we want the pigs out of our communities, harassing our people. Mm -hmm. We don't want to kill anybody. We are peaceful people. You know, we are not the ones here because we wouldn't did anything wrong to somebody. It's because of what somebody else did to us in our community. But before that, you said off, off, bang, bang. What is it? How, am I, how am I supposed to interpret that? Or more importantly, how is a police officer supposed to interpret that statement? Well, we don't care how you know, police officers interpret anything. We want police officers to quit uh, killing on, on black people. That's what we well, want. I do, too. I don't want them killing any unarmed person. Yeah, uh, when you yeah. hear that some white Americans label your group, the Black Panther Party, New Black Panther Party, that's been around since the 60s and 70s as a hate group, mm -hmm. they categorize it with the Ku Klux Klan, right. and they say this is no good for the community. What's your response to that? Well, the media is the fourth branch of government, and they uh, they push the agenda of this country, you know, to paint everything that's positive in the black community in a negative light, you know, to keep everything offset, you know, to keep the people in illusion. The people are not educated. They do not come and sit down and talk to us. We're a political party. You have the Democratic Party, you have the Republican Party, you have the Tea Party, and you have the New Black Panther Party. How is that a hate group? Mm -hmm. Now, when you say the media, it's a, the media's fault that they are misleading the public, how is that the case when you have your history and when we go out and we cover you, we cover what we see? Well, I don't know if anybody been covering the history of the Panthers. If they're covering the history of the Panthers, they need to uh, uncover what the Department of Justice and this own government has done to these people. They need to go back and cover what happened with Black Wall Street where they were being attacked. We're trying to build peacefully as a people, and every time we're trying to build peacefully as a people, uh, we have these KKK members, uh, members of the government, the National Guard called in on us, and all we want to do is build peacefully. We're peaceful people. Now, when you came out with your weapons in, in Waller County, right. obviously we've seen the Oath Keepers in mm -hmm. Ferguson with their weapons. Right. Uh, but when you came to Waller County with your weapons, I saw so much racism on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Firmly divided. On one side, we had whites and Hispanics saying that you guys are hate mongers, you're a hate group. And on uh, the other side, you had some blacks supporting you. What surprised me was so many Hispanics calling you the N-word. Right, right. Does that surprise you at all? No, it doesn't surprise me at all because you have to emulate the European in order to uh, in order to strive in this country and that's what they're looking at you know everybody look at us they feel like they can hate us you know that's the way to go in this country that's how you're supposed to make it now Bob you said you weren't surprised by that when you and I because you grew up in I grew up in South Texas okay and, you know, I've been in that community and I understand 
the, the feelings that Hispanic people have expressed, and I've heard that term expressed very harshly in the past. I take objection to that term no matter who I hear it from. Um, I think that if people will sit down and have an intelligent conversation about an issue, we can move. I'd like to talk to you about some of the things we, we do agree on, about Planned Parenthood, for, for example, about the, the, the crimes against the black community that have taken place because of the government. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of issues I think we could find agreement on, but when you start talking what we perceive or what I perceive as a very violent threat, that makes it hard to sit down and have a reasonable discussion. You got 15 seconds left. Yeah, well, we're, wrap we're, it up. we're through having conversations with people that hate us. We've uh, we've been through the civil rights movement. We've been through voting rights act. We asked for dash cams. Then we asked for tasers. Then we asked for dash. Uh, then we asked for body cameras. All we're doing is continuing to people show people actually what's going on. You know, conversations are not getting it. We've been here at the table sitting down having this conversation, this trignology of the enemy, and we're just not with that anymore. Well, guys, we want to thank you guys for coming on. Bob Price from Breitbart, uh, Texas, and Yakanam from the New Black Panther Party. I guess there won't be any conversations in the future. That's Maybe here on the Factor Uncensored. That's about it. It's about it. We'll be back with uh, more after this. Stay with us. Almost in the books. Well, guys, welcome back to the Isaiah Factor Uncensored, and it's time for some of the hot stories and hot topics going on in our community and around the country. Joining us now is Erica Rico with 93Q and also Laura Reynolds with Sports Radio 610. We want to thank you guys for coming out. What you got for us? What you got for us? We're excited. Okay, so it's the 70th anniversary, 70th anniversary of that famous Times Square kiss, you know, the one where everybody's... I remember that. We're still trying to find out who those two people uh -huh. are. Well, of course, the physicists over at Texas State University, they're putting science to it and to try and determine what time the kiss was taken. That way we can, everybody step forward and said, hey, that was me and the kiss. Well, they're trying to determine who it really was. Turns out, according to Shadows on Buildings, it was at 5.51 p.m. President Truman didn't make the announcement until 7.03. So they so were, they were kissing, just smooching early. They were just making out. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I know. Well, was it a Kardashian? <laughs> oh, we'll get to the Kardashians. They're on the list. Let's put it that way. Well, from a sailor in Times Square to some Marines, for the first time in 54 years, they were actually able to put the U.S. flag back up in Cuba at the embassy, and, yeah. and they Historical were able to raise moment. it. The great thing about it was the three Marines who originally brought the flag down 54 years ago were back to put the flag back incredible. up. Incredible. It was incredible. just incredible. Oh, awesome. Okay, was. so the Teen Choice Awards are going to be on Fox this Sunday. Now, if you have teens and you're like, what are these kids talking about? I have no clue what language you're speaking. We're going to help you out here on Fox. All you have to do is look, watch the Teen Choice Awards. We have the red carpet. We have what everyone's wearing. We have, you know, the verbiage mm -hmm. everyone's right. using. So if you want to be a cool parent, make sure you're watching the Teen Choice Awards. Also, the Stars of Empire will be on there. Yeah, yeah. They're the hottest thing ever right now. I'm just hoping Ludacris doesn't have a shirt. Okay, please. <laughs> just host the, host the Teen Awards without a shirt. You know, speaking of marriage, you know, it's always in sickness and health. Well, this couple took it even further. Albert and Lisa Harris actually... Uh, he needed a kidney, so she turned out to be a perfect match. That's and so she was able to donate a kidney, so now they actually share more than just marriage. They share a kidney together, I too. Mean, he owes her romantic. big time. Yeah, right? yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're they're, they're, they're together kidney. forever, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yes. Now, don't ask Sharon Stone a question unless you want to know a very blunt answer. Remember she had that brain hemorrhage in 2001? She said one of the side effects is that she'll just tell you whatever is on her mind. There's no filter. There's no, like, I'm going to be nice and sure uh -huh. it. There's none of that anymore. Oh my God. I so I need to go ask Sharon a couple of questions like what's your bank account number? I, don't know if it's I like there. the way you think. I like the way you, you think know that. that. Yeah. Well I promise Kardashians, there's Kardashians. Oh. I was so glad when we ha found out that Chloe is dating James Harden because they have brought the drama to Houston. It's awesome. So right after Lamar Odom supposedly confronted Chloe in LA, Chloe had to seek some, you know, good time with her beau, James Harden. So she flew to Houston and they ate out at Chipotle. Holy what? Come on, James. You can afford better than that, all right? Hey, that's fancy eating. Yeah, it's a wild <laughs> We'll be back with more of the Isaiah Factor Uncensored with the two-minute sports drill in a moment. Stay with us.
I need to eat that. <laughs> and welcome back to the Isaiah Factor Uncensored. And joining me now is Laura Reynolds with Sports Radio 610. And you have the two minute sports drill in Absolutely. 145. All right, no huddle. Let's go. All right, have you had enough JJ Watt? I've got more for you. He's going to be on Texas Monthly. He's on Hard Knocks. I mean, you see the guy everywhere. I just talked to Scott McClellan at HEB. Uh -huh. The new HEB commercials are getting ready to come out with Scott. They're going to be hilarious. And of course, JJ in the news now because he eats 9,000 calories a day to deliver all of that to you. So, what would be 9,000 calories? I'm so glad you asked. This is a plate of Alfred. You would have to eat seven of these in order seven. to have 9,000 calories now, a day. I can do two, two and a half, but seven, I don't think so. You better get busy and get a <laughs> shovel. Let's put it that way. Let's go from Superman to superheroes. Uh -huh. We've got an LSU player, Traven De uh, Duall, and a Southern University player, Randall Menard, and they are actually cousins. And they came upon a car accident. A woman was trapped upside down in an SUV, and they actually pulled her out and rescued her before the first responders could get Oh my God. Now, both of those colleges are my hometown. Southern University is my I alma mater. Know. And that's why I had to mention it. Absolutely. Thank you, Laura Reynolds. That's all the time we have. And we want to thank you guys for coming out and participating in the Isaiah Factor Uncensored here at the LA Bar. We'll see you back here next Friday. Have a good weekend. Now, I can eat this. Oh, oh.